Still going. Hey, this is John Bollinger with Premier Guitar. Today we're taking a first look at the brand new Bell Ray by Car Amplifiers. Essentially, this is taking the, uh, the holy trinity of, of British amps and combining them in one cool little combo. And I'll tell you about how they do it right after taking a second to subscribe below. That way we can keep you up to date on all the cool gear that's out there. So here's how I'm recording this. Uh, this is my old 1952 Les Paul, been modified a bit over the past 71 years. Uh, on the floor, I've got a couple pedals, um, but I'm not gonna really use them. It's really just the amp, but I do wanna show how it uses a little bit of delay. There's a tiny bit of a Keeley halo, halo in that. And then I'll try a drive or a compressor maybe, so you can have that, uh, that option. I'm miking it with a trusty Shure SM57, and that's going into an Apollo 8 and into Logic, and out to you all. And for a taste test, I'll also give you a telecast from my old cryotone tele, so you can hear how it does on some proper single coils. So let me give you the lowdown on this. Um, it's a point-to-point, -point hand-wired combo amp. Uh, one channel, 16 watts, all tube. There are two 12AX7s, one EF86, two EL84s, and one EZ81 tube rectifier. Controls across the top are super simple. You've got top, treble, mid, and bass. And then for the tremolo, that luscious tube tremolo, you've got speed and depth. But here's where it gets a lot more interesting. And of course there's levels, your volume at the beginning of it. But right next to the level is a, it's a, to me it almost looks like a second attenuator. Uh, there's an attenuator that's, that's great on this. But in addition to this, they have uh, this quick switch right there that gets you from, from full volume to a little less painful volume. It knocks it down slightly, which is, I found this uh, kind of a wonderful Easter egg in this amp because I was, you know, when you're trying to dial in tones and it's, you know, I got a wife and kid and the whole thing and it gets a little loud. So, uh, but you want to make sure your tone is on. So this magic switch here takes, I, I find it pretty much impossible to tell the difference. So here we are, I'm on the, the, uh, the setting I came in on. So there it is, full blast. There it is, the tone I mean, is, I think, identical. Volume's just down a bit. So that's a secret weapon. I'm gonna leave it up for the rest of, rest of the time, uh, but it's one of the, um, one of the ingredients. The, the ingredient I really wanna talk about is this rotary right here. It goes between V6, H73, and M68. And as you might have guessed, V, is sort of a you know a top boost sort of tone and the way they they achieve this the amp itself uh is, is always the same but it's their tone stack that switches but it's all done through the stone tone stack on this magic switch so before we go any further let's get into that i want to start on the on the boxy bit because i think it's 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 a uh, a really good interpretation of, of a top based amp. Um, coming in, I had it at about, oh, I guess probably, uh, probably seven o'clock, but I'm gonna take it down to a much more kind of reasonable level right now. So we'll have it, have it not super loud. And uh, you can hear this first setting, but I wanna give you a telly on it because to me, a box and a telly is kind of a real thing. So now we're in the first setting, the V66, and I've got my cry-tone telly. And to me, uh, John Jorgensen back in the Helicasters used a telly through a box and it really established kind of a country tone uh, for, for like the next, I don't know, decade. And like Brad Paisley used that for quite a while and kind of got that thing. But man, this is really close. <laughs> Now, if we get a little bit of a boost in the mids. Oh, 
I love that, and I find if you put a little compression in front of it. just got all of that classic voxy tone. I mean, I, I love that. I love that whole tone. I love Tom Petty G's that kind of thing. Like... <laughs> It's just a classic rock and roll, country-ish, slightly driven tone. It also does, you know, I find it, it's great in the neck pickup. And with a little of that tremolo. Just rich, right? Now that's with the with the mids up a little bit, and then if I boost it a little bit more, let's put it on halfway so you can just hear it does like that. And this is without the compressor or anything. <laughs> Man, love it. And again, I've got a little bit of that delay in front of it, but even without it. Love that tone. So that's on the V, mids up a little bit, everything else flat. Okay, so let's go to the middle setting. This is the H73. And again, it's just the, stone, uh, the tone stack that's changing, rest the same. But this middle section, this eight, this high wattage kind of thing, has a very different mid-range, uh, I think. So here we are, same settings as before the box. <laughs> So not quite as angry, a little louder, I think, and a very different tone. Let me boost that mid-range a little bit. Very sweet sounding amp, right? Uh, let's get a little more angry. Let's go up to about three quarters, see what it does. I love that 
tone. So now let me just try that compressor in front of this one, see what that does. It's just a Keeley Cromp. <laughs> that I find I find just a little bit of a goose in front of it I just have really the level up and the comp down to almost nothing but I found just goosing a little bit just really wakes it up now let's try the final setting the M68 and I will set everything at a midpoint right here let's hear what it does <laughs> I could do that for hours. <laughs> you know, it's funny, this, this tune tremolo, I mean, you really, you feel it as much as you hear it. It is really fun to play through tube amps and just feel that next to you. Very inspiring. Anyway, that is straight up noon. Just, just great, right? Now, it's a, I find with, with all of these amps, it's the, the, the holy trinity of, of British amps, I find all of them, even at their sweetest point, they have a little bit of a grit to them. There's a little something going on there that, a little bit of drive. And, and this is no exception. You know, bring this level way down there. There's just something kind of in your face, right? And that's down just like on about three. it up to three quarters. Now let me put on the Les Paul again because you should hear it with that. Okay, now we are just like God intended it. It's a uh, Les Paul from the 50s plugged right in. <laughs> Let's hear what that does. <laughs> something about that tone right now just for funsies I want to switch through the three different amp tones here we're all, okay so this is the amp middle H to V So what I really like about this amp is, you know, right now we're in the golden age of give you every tone in one little box. You know, I mean, the digital thing has got that, got that market cornered. But I love this that it's, I mean, it's really just one rotary. And, and man, that's three very different tones. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you can, you can, you can hear the personality of each one without tweaking anything other than that, than that one switch. And we haven't even even gotten into the attenuator yet. Here's what's really cool. So it comes in at a very loud 16 watts. Uh, and then there's this switch over here that bumps that down if that's too loud. But there's also an attenuator that we've been running on this entire time that drops it way down uh, and you can drop it, when you hit on the attenuator, it brings it down, but then when you hit it again, when, then you have another 
uh, chicken head switch that brings it even down to a whisper. So right now, this is the attenuator on. It goes from two watts down to zero watts. So, and zero watts is basically a dog whistle that I can't hear, but maybe you can. So anyway, I love that. And if we give it, if we really give it the, the, uh, the full on 16 watts, it's shockingly loud. I will torture sound man Perry right now for a minute. <laughs> Now, I had to go kind of easy because it'd be overdriving the, I don't want to overdrive my signal any more than I have to, but here it is with the attenuator on. And these things are difficult to judge because louder always sounds, you know, like better. But you know, the truth is, I think the tone is so consistent between that 16 watt and it attenuated down to tune, I think it's really close. And again, this next attenuator switch can bring it down to just a, a manageable whisper. So uh, I'm really impressed with that. For the rest of so I gotta keep it on the, on the attenuated down because it is just a punishingly loud 16 watts, which is, I think, kind of a, kind of a boxy thing. Like an AC30 is, God, they are so loud and I don't know, how they do it, if, if it's some sort of super efficient way they wire it, but this has that same kind of DNA. It's a very loud 16 watts. You could easily gig with this thing. So up to this point on the Marshall study, and I've had the EQ totally flat, but I want to see what it sounds like with a little bit of that mid boost. <laughs> Now for one final little taste test, I'm gonna put a um, Keeley Blues Disorder in front of it so you can hear a Marshall with a little bit of a drive like a Tube Screamer usually sounds great. Let's hear what it does with that. Here it is. <laughs> So the cabinet is built in house at a European birch. Speaker is a Fane F25, 12 inch. This combo weighs 34 pounds and retails for about $3,140. So good on you. This is a really impressive amp, a joy to play. To read the full written review, go to premierguitar.com. While you're online, make sure you subscribe to all our uh, YouTube, social media crap, all that stuff. Maybe subscribe to the magazine. Keep you updated on all the cool new gear that's out there. It's John Bolger. Till later. I'm gonna I'm gonna play off in this Marshall setting, and it's just right into it. I got I got that halo in front, but just uh, right into it.